Well, there are two uh, really interesting components to this study. Number one is that we are studying a process in which cells convert to a metastatic phenotype, very much like melanoma, in the absence of DNA damage, exposure to carcinogens, uh, or any kind of uh, oncogene expression. So this is, a, this is an example of the initiation of a cancer-like process without any of those types of damage that are usually thought to be required for cancer. So by itself, this is a, a, a really interesting aspect of the carcinogenic process that is induced by a physiological change, not a, not a genetic defect. Um, the other interesting thing about this study is that we use the machine learning platform here to uh, get a better picture of what's going on inside the animal, of how this whole system works. So that is basically the most creative part of the scientific enterprise, is, is when scientists try to think about what the data mean and how to uh, combine them to form a good model of what the biological system is doing so that they could then make, uh, make changes in the system behavior. And, and I think what, we, what we're showing here is that uh, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning really have an important part to play, not just in the sort of drudgery of, of calculations, but actually in the most uh, creative aspects of the scientific enterprise. Well, when we embarked on the project, uh, we had great faith that uh, this kind of uh, machine learning technology can be used to answer questions like this. And uh, so in a certain, in a certain sense, uh, we, we, we expected this, uh, this to work broadly. Uh, however, realistically, when we, when we actually saw this um, identify this, this treatment of three specific uh, chemicals that we could use, and when we actually tried them and it worked in the lab, it, you know, it, right in front of our eyes, we were, uh, it, it, was, it was really quite, quite shocking. I mean, it's one thing to sort of uh, think that, that the, the general approach is going to work, but it's quite another to have an artificial intelligence uh, look at your data, uh, come up with its its own representation of what is going on in the biological system and then make recommendations for achieving an outcome that you've never seen before and then have that be confirmed in the lab and and that that was pretty striking to us well we're interested in both aspects of this problem so we're certainly interested in how cells make decisions in the body whether those uh, decisions lead to cells forming specific organs during embryogenesis or whether they go awry and uh, uh, convert to a, a carcinogenic or, or met metastatic phenotype. So we're certainly interested in understanding cancer for uh, both the biomedical uh, applications and because it, it's, it's a window on the most basic uh, biological uh, facts of, of, of how cells communicate and, and carry out their business. At the same time, we're also very interested in how artificial intelligence can help scientists to understand complex uh, living systems. It's, it's a reality that, that with the amount of research that's going on uh, every day, uh, the amount of uh, data and information available to us is, is growing constantly. And it's, it's rapidly outstripping the ability of human scientists to keep everything in their mind to uh, be able to uh, sort of uh, glean uh, insight from the mountain of, of raw data that we're getting. So, so I think what we need is a new bioinformatics of shape. You know, what, what, what computers did for bioinformatics of uh, a protein and, and gene sequencing, we need to do the same thing for the more complex functions of, of cell behavior. And artificial intelligence uh, is, is a tool that, that we really have to use to continue to make progress in regenerative medicine. Well, regenerative medicine and cancer uh, medicine are both facing uh, the same problem, which is that uh, basic scientists uh, continuously identify uh, it, more and more uh, complex pathways and various factors that go into these uh, decisions that cells have to make. And so in order to develop effective therapeutics, we have to really understand what the system is doing and then be able to infer specific treatments or interventions that are going to get the cells to do what we want them to do. And this is becoming increasingly more difficult the more we understand uh, how cells uh, are controlled and the more data that we actually have. So I think the implications for these fields are that what this kind of technology will allow us to do is to use the, um, the, the, the special skills of these kinds of uh, AI systems to help design interventions, to help design treatments that will have specific outcomes in terms of cell behavior, in terms of patterning, in terms of regenerative uh, growth and repair and so on. Uh, the name of the game is to come up with interventions that cause specific um, therapeutic outcomes. And uh, this will be an invaluable tool for us to be able to uh, f f identify and, 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 and determine what those interventions need to be.